Hey everybody, today's adventures bring us to the western portion of the United States, more specifically we're in Washington state right now, and we're in an area called the Olympic Peninsula. If you haven't been there, one of the coolest things about the Olympic Peninsula is, well, as you can see today, it is very green here. I know a lot of people would think, how's it a rainforest? But remember, rainforest isn't specifically equatorial. Um, it doesn't have to be a tropical, and in this case, it is a temperate rainforest here. So it's one of the coolest places uh, that you can see greenery in the United States and see ecosystems that are pretty unique. Now, another thing that's cool about this region, of course, is the geology. And this region being on the western coast also has some complex and unique geology and that's why we're here today really interesting features that you can find here and it's this feature of the rocks that make them look rather bubbly and if we look here at a rock like this on the ground it might look like something you'd imagine as a river rock right so they're normally these rounded rocks like this this is what river rocks look like they get rounded but this is all for a very different reason and then there's a piece here that's broken in half. So again, this is a much larger piece. So what is going on here? Why are there all these large, rounded looking dark rocks in this formation? Well, what we're seeing is a feature known as pillow lavas or commonly pillow basalts because of the basaltic composition. This is what it looks like on the inside, this darker crystalline shade. So we know we have uh, we, we can tell by the darker minerals that we're probably dealing with something that's rich in, say, iron and magnesium, right? So that's typical of these darker types of rocks, and, and we seem to be dealing in this area with volcanic material. When magma of this composition cools, we call it basalt. So where did all this basalt come from? Well, regions where we find tons of basalt are called large igneous provinces. Tons of it piled up in the Pacific and we call that Silesia. So why is it here today and why the pillows? Pillow basalts form underwater and are typically associated with the eruption of basaltic lavas in deep ocean environments. We can see the billowing of lava into the oceanic water and the forming of pillow basalts today at the Hawaiian Islands volcanic chain. But the pillow basalts we're looking at today in the Olympic Peninsula formed differently and are much older. These pillow basalts erupted rapidly about 55 million years ago. Hey, just a real quick message from me, Heather, the host here at Let's Go Geo. Actually, I am host, videographer, photographer, editor, creator, all that stuff. This channel is run solely by me and I started it because I do love geology and all things related to the topic and I love teaching and I thought it would be a great way to bring to people that in the field experience but digitally so Let's Go Geo was born. The project's going well but I have a lot of great other ideas so if you want to help me out support me and help the project move along you can find me on Patreon and you can become a fan there as well as get access to exclusive content. So head over to Patreon. Otherwise, let's get back to today's topic. The geology of the Olympic Peninsula region is rather complex. In the simplest terms, we can think of all of this land that's now here in the Olympic region as accreted terrain. Basically, this gigantic pile of pillow basalts was forming on the ocean floor as part of this new oceanic plate material. And that material eventually accreted or basically became attached to the North American continent. And now we have a series of fault-bounded accreted terrains that essentially make up the Olympic Peninsula. And that's kind of the simplest explanation of the complex geology of the Olympic Peninsula region. And these pieces here that came off of the edge of it, right? So they just kind of exfoliated off of it. And look at this. That external rind is finer grained than this interior coarser material. And that's all the result of how it chills and solidifies when it comes in contact with that oceanic water. Now, if you're familiar with basalt, you might have noticed the lack of that vesicular look that's common with basalts. In this case, again, this lava material cooled really quickly uh, when it came in contact with the water. So it was unable to form the gaseous bubbles. And being that it's under the pressure of the water, it doesn't form those bubbles that are otherwise common in the eruption of gas-rich basalt. 
And so this massive supply of magma kept pushing through and creating these bulbous shaped basaltic rocks and new ones would form at the front until we have a gigantic pile of pillow basalts, rocks that look a little bit like pillows that are interspersed also with marine sandstones. And millions of years later, this material was pushed toward the western portion of North America, where we can now find it today, making up a large amount of the Olympic Peninsula, particularly in the northern and eastern portions, where we can see this slightly deformed and weathered, but super interesting looking basalt material that was once erupted on the ocean floor. You can also find this in other regions of western North America, including along the western portion of Oregon, where remnants of Silesia now reside. That's the story of pillow basalts and the interesting geology of western Washington on the Olympic Peninsula. Another awesome shape the basalt material can form into are these columns often called columnar basalt pillars and you can see those in Washington as well. You'll find these more on the eastern portion of the state and it's related to a different event that came later after the pillow basalts we just talked about. If you want to learn more about this I did a whole video all about columnar basalts and the Columbia River basalt. So check it out and join me on the next adventure.